Good morning and welcome to a look at some of the alternative social media platforms you don't hear about every day or except if you've been watching any tech news lately, all you hear about is Twitter and Elon Musk. I'm Dante St. James. This is part of our summer series of um, you know, short, sharp ways of learning some new skills uh, while you might be taking a little bit of a break from work. Although uh, today's my first day back. I don't know about you, um, but it's, it's a good day to, I guess, take a bit of time to ease yourself in and learn something new about some new social platforms. Let's share that screen. And we'll get underway. Now, I'll just let you know the um, the uh, chat window is open. The Q&A is open. So please ask questions. I would love to hear them. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can comment down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But if you're live on Zoom right now, because I am right now, uh, please do leave some messages along the way and I'll answer those live as we're going. First of all, today we're going to look at exploring some alternative platforms. We're going to look at the pros, the cons, and the how-tos of each of them. So I'll take a low, a live look inside each one, uh, except for one of them, unfortunately, we won't be able to look at because it's a mobile-only platform. Um, we'll look at what the business opportunities in each one is as well. So I'll give you a bit of an overall view of what these ones look like. So first of all, that's brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program. It's an initiative by the Australian government and uh, around until the end of March this year in its current form. So uh, please do, if you've got any of those, you know, those um, one hour sessions uh, with with one to one help from an advisor, please use them up by the end of March. Otherwise, I'll go away. Um, I've done a lot of stuff. I work as a lead trainer with Meta Australia, um, as business station, as a digital solutions and uh, entrepreneurship facilitator with Workforce Australia, also connected with the digital springboard project through Google and the Australian government's Be Connected program, which uh, helps to link older Australians with the digital economy. That's enough about me. Let's have a look at some of these platforms, hey? We might even get an early mark today if we get through it all quickly. So the first one is Twitter, then Pinterest. That little uh, sort of buzzy bee looking thing is called Hive. Then we've got Mastodon, which has been getting a lot of press lately, Reddit and Quora. So let's have a look at each of these ones individually. Twitter has 368 million active users monthly at the moment. Now that number seems to go around from 420 to 368. Depends on whether it's Elon talking or whether it's someone else talking. The generally agreed, it's around about 368 million, which is um, not to be sneezed at, still a lot of people. Nowhere near Facebook's 2 billion and Instagram's 2 billion now too as well. <clears throat> Instagram's actually caught up to Facebook uh, in terms of the size of the people in there. So it's uh, worth remembering as you start to work out what you're doing with your social networks. The posts are limited to 280 characters. Now it used to be 140. Now it's 280, um, which is you know, quite a, a limited amount. You're not going to be able to blog on the thing. It's, it's, it's like a micro blogging platform, little short, sharp messages that you send out. You can send text, you can send videos, photos, slide shares, um, the videos and photos and slide shares, live video and the audio strings don't count towards the character count. They handle a little bit differently. So you can do a video or a photo and still have 280 characters on there. You can embed links like you can on Facebook, uh, it has live video just like Facebook does as well. And it has a thing called audio string or spaces they call it um it's been on and off lately because elon basically doesn't like um people talking about him in these streams so he turned off the entire platform there for a minute i think it's back but who knows it's it's really hard to tell um he just seems to sort of do things really weirdly from one day to the next making very rash decisions about whether he likes people or not um now the the text side of it yes 280 characters if i looked at the the good side of twitter and there is a lot of good to it, despite the challenges. There's lots of opportunity to build an audience because there's a lot of people on there. The kind of people that are on there, you tend to find a lot of government workers. You tend to find a lot of uh, journalists, media people. You tend to find a lot of celebrities are in there as well because it's a great place for them to be able to very clearly and easily talk with their audience. It may seem overwhelming if they're on something like Facebook or Instagram or on Twitter because it's very much a one-way sort of um, broadcast platform rather than you having to engage in lots and lots of conversations or Although that is also encouraged, it can be something which um, really um, makes it worthwhile to go in there as a complement to other networks you may already be on. Um, it is getting a lot of attention right now. So um, I don't know if you ever look at news.com.au for about the last two months, it's all been about Elon Musk buying Twitter what's going on with it, how he's going crazy, um, how things are changing, how it's going to lose all its followers, 
there's a lot of attention, which certainly has brought me back in. Um, I had left Twitter alone for a very long time and only had it really posting automatically my, um, my uh, podcast episodes, but I've now come back on to more actively participating on it. Um, not putting a lot of attention on it, that's for sure, but putting some attention on it, enough to sort of make it worthwhile me being there. It does have better reach. Now, depending on your following, of course, you need to get a following, but it does have better reach than Facebook for business. So your business pages on Facebook, how they have very little reach at the moment. Twitter has better reach because there's less people posting on Twitter than what there is as a proportion of people posting on Facebook. So the, the, the feed is not quite as busy as Facebook's. So that's something worth remembering. Now, whether that reach is going to be good reach or bad reach, well, that, that's up to your own experience of, of whether they're the people you're actually trying to reach or not. Um, it makes a very good add-on to things like LinkedIn. LinkedIn tends to like really short, sharp, to the point posts, um, and short, sharp, and to the point is very much what LinkedIn, what uh, Twitter is about as well. So it can be a good place to sort of double up on your twi- on your on your LinkedIn posts, particularly if you keep them short and sharp within that two hundred and eighty character mark. Um, it might be a good place to put it. Um, I find that also that things where like their their lists, very short lists of three or four points, tend to perform quite well on Twitter in the same way they perform quite well on LinkedIn as well. So if you're looking at something to complement what you're already doing on LinkedIn, it's probably good. If you're looking at something that's going to give you a little bit more reach, perhaps to a different kind of audience than what you'd find on Facebook, it's good for that as well. Um, there are some downsides though. And I have to, I, with every good, there's also a bad. And the bad on Twitter is that it's expected to lose about you know 5% of its users in 2023, which is about 10 million users. They reckon that about two to 3 million users have already dropped off because of Elon Musk and his shenanigans. Um, it's probably going to get worse before it's going to get better. I've actually got um, a, a feeling that Twitter will be a very good thing. It's going to do very well for itself, um, not because of Elon, but because I think that it needed a change. It wasn't performing very well. It needed something to come in. And there's some things that are being talked about and some moves they've made, which have been very good. It can be very messy and aggressive though. The um, the pretty much the entire department of people who are to do with um safety and um, moderation have, have gone. So you know, seventy five percent of the workforce of Twitter has gone. Um, so it's made it a little bit not as safe. So if you're someone who's very easily offended or triggered by things. Twitter probably isn't a great place for you right now. I do something in Twitter called blocking and muting, um, which means my Twitter is actually quite pleasant. Um, I don't have you know all the arguments coming up, all the political stuff coming up because I've actually gone to the trouble of making sure I don't have that stuff coming up. I'll show you very shortly how that works. It can take a while to get momentum though. I'm still trying to get momentum. I've only really just started back on it in the last maybe three months. Still trying to see what works, what doesn't work, how it happens, how to work with it. Um, It does, uh, for me, tie into uh, third-party posting tools. So I use things like um, Social Pilot, Sociomonials. You might use something like Hootsuite or um, Buffer, any of those things. It does tend to tie in very well to those. The problem is that not all those tools will create what we call a, a, a Twitter thread. And Twitter threads are where you're having a, a, a longer convers or a longer post that's across several posts, but they're all linked together. So for instance, if your thing goes for, you know, um, 3000 words and you want to put it in Twitter, it's going to break it up. You need to break it up into um, a lot of different uh, 280 character tweets, but they will link them together as what is called a thread of tweets. So that's something which doesn't really happen outside of Twitter itself. Hopefully that's something which will come across in the future and be able to sort of schedule along because it's a bit of a problem with my workflow at the moment. So uh, let's take a look inside Twitter to see what it looks like. Um, I've got my Twitter hope open over here. So um, I always get like Star Trek stuff because I follow a lot of Star Trek related people on here. Uh, as a bit of a look around, this is the feed. So you go down the feeds and more Star Trek, more Star Trek, a little bit more Star Trek. I've got a lot of Star Trek and I get a lot of um, suggestions of who to follow, more Star Trek, um, some cartoons and something like that. So Jordan Peterson uh, is not someone I want to follow. But what I want to do is that Jordan B. Peterson is, is maybe not someone who I like. So what I can do, I can mute them out. I can block Jordan out or just at least mute and so I don't see him. I don't follow him anyway. Um, I follow a guy called Dickie Bush who um, has commented on my Jordan stuff. So I can either go, I say I'm not interested in this tweet and it will, it will learn as I'm going that I don't really want that or I can just block 
Jordan B. Peterson altogether. I don't really want to know the guy. I don't know who Daniel is, but apparently I no, I don't necessarily follow him. So I don't have a huge amount of people I follow. So I'm getting lots and lots of suggestions. So what I'm getting is, is interactions that other people have. So in this case, Daniel is followed by Sahil and Zayn, who are two people that I follow. So they're two people that I follow. So therefore I'll see a lot of their stuff. This is what you don't see so much of on Facebook is those ongoing, very, very common, like every few tweet suggestions. So for instance, fascinating, I don't follow that. But it's telling me that Daniel, who I Daniel Dimitrov, who I do follow, does that. And like I'm actually kind of fascinated by that. So what I might do is just say, okay, what can I do over here? I can follow Fascinate. So I'm going to follow them. That's the people who produce that one. Because that's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a bit of history. I wouldn't mind seeing that. A pair of golden flip flops, flops with toe caps. Um, go down the dance slot, who is someone who I don't follow as well, but it's suggesting me more people that I could follow along the way. Trek Central, I do follow. So we're starting to see that there's like different things I can follow along the way. In this one, I, I follow the two, no, I don't follow the Trek Central. So now I do. Lance, who's doing um, a funny meme sort of thing, I don't really care about that. I might even go, you know what, that's not something I want to see. Now, something else I can see over here on the right is the trending tweets, the things that are really happening right now. The Australian open is an obvious one um it's really coming up and it's, a, it's quite a turning point in in grand slam tennis because a lot of the big names that we're used to over the last two decades are no longer playing so that's going to be really interesting sea world obviously to do with the helicopter crash that tragically happened on uh, the week on the week on the long weekend um, and labor so someone's talking about labor i don't like to follow politics too much in here it kind of ruins my vibe on on, on twitter so i don't tend to follow those too much but it does give me suggestions on different people I can follow. Jerry Ryan is an actor from Star Trek, so I'll follow her. Um, Neil Schaefer, I don't know who that is. And Crowd Security, I don't really want to follow that. That's not what I'm interested in. Over on the left, I can explore hashtags. So I can explore a hashtag like, let's say, for instance, it's got a few different trending ones going on. But I might want to follow, say, a hashtag of digital marketing. So let's type in digital marketing. Now, just like on Instagram, you can follow... Um, Hashtags, not just people. So you can follow topics. So I look at digital marketing. I'm just going to go digital marketing is, um, that's a person. So I'm just going to hashtag digital marketing. And let's see what it brings up. It's going to bring me up the, the, the top things, the top people, the top rated people um, on, on LinkedIn, on, on Twitter, sorry, who are all to do with this. So we look at that and go, okay, there's roadmaps. Gary Flicks has got some information on there on passive income, lazy marketing, kind of like the idea of that. So I might you know, follow that one, follow James Hicks. Um, if I see something I like, I can then go this uh, T-shaped marketing framework. I might um, follow uh, Mayona because um, it, it sounds like it's actually a very interesting thing to read. Um, Palo has a startup growth roadmap. Um, nine elements of digital markets. I'm starting to see stuff in here that I'm very interested in. So I may want to follow those people. I can also see the latest posts that use the hashtag of digital marketing. So I can start to see whether there's things in here that I actually do like, interspersed with some ads. Uh, the rookie habit, no, not so much. Um, going down to Brett Murphy, who's usually quite on top of things, no. Um, SMSIT, no. Brett Murphy, again, he's been posting a lot of stuff lately under that hashtag. Uh, we'll start to see if there's things that are interesting. If not, I can move across to people who are, are do with digital marketing. So these are going to be like companies. They've got digital marketing magazines. So I might follow that because it has some interest to me. Um, the Wall, uh, sorry, the, um, the Blue Digital Digital Market. So you're starting to see some companies starting to appear in these results. So I can see if any of these are ones that I want to follow. If not, well, then I'll just get move on. And I can see photos that have been posted under the hashtag of digital marketing. So I'm starting to see you know, people advertising themselves. Like that's just so classic. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to call some random guy off Twitter to say like in, in a, possibly an American post a call code. So yeah, that, that sort of stuff's a bit of a waste of time. But I did see this one and I went, oh yeah, I like that. I'll just, um, I'll, I'll follow that one. So I start to see the photos that people have posted that have some sort of interest in what I'm looking for. And then, of course, the same thing with videos. So I can see the latest videos are being posted about that. A lot of these are very promotional, not very um, full of, they're not really full of any sort of value. Maybe this guy, um, awesome Google Chrome extension for productivity, that can be do, to do us. Um, could be an interesting thing for me to follow. So I might go, you know what, I'll actually watch that. I can then do things like saving the, I can share this um, share this to other people if I like, or I can do is a retweet. So I can go, that's a pretty good to-do list. I'm going to retweet that. Um, and it's just going to immediately go out on my feed to the people who follow me. 
So retweeting is basically like sharing, but it's just immediate. You don't have any sort of, you're not adding any um, extra context to that. All you're doing is just retweeting exactly what that guy tweeted. So if I like that, I put that through. Now that's the explore. The notifications are basically the people who are talking to you. So for instance, um, the No Talk Context Brits, which is an entertainment channel and um, a parody of, it's interesting, a parody of a character from a Star Trek show has actually followed me as well. So they're the couple of things. Um, also, I can look in the notifications that come from verified users. So they're the people who either are verified as significant people or in most cases now, they're just paying the, the $8 US a month or $13 a month Australian to get the blue tick. I've got a blue tick as well. So I'm, I'm verified. You can see down here um, because I, I, I'm testing it out to see if it makes much of a difference to my reach. I can also see people who've mentioned me. So you start to see that. Now from the home screen, that's your feed. What I don't, I don't generally want to go to the home screen all the time. What I want to do is look at my profile and that will show me what I have posted. So it's going to show me what I've posted a little bit about my, I can edit my profile, edit my image, edit my cover photo, edit what my different bits of information are. And then I can look at what I've posted. So it showed me that one from Arpit that I've um, retweeted. So at the moment that's, um, you know, got one comment that someone's put on there, not from me. Underneath this, I've got a bit of a, um, a thread that I did. So it's here I've got four of four, three of four. I'll just make it a bit bigger for you. Two of four, one of four. So I'll start off with one of four. I was about, um, it's basically what I posted this morning um, as a scheduled tweet thread. So I went, okay, it was a big year of experimentation for last week. And then I continue on to the next one. And what's telling me along the way is how many people actually saw that so far. So in the last 46 minutes, three people have seen part one, five people have seen part two, seven have seen part three, and two have seen part four. So different parts of it are there. Now I can promote and boost my tweets the same way you can boost posts from Facebook, but it's not just, this is just for business users. So I'm now a business user on this. So you can be like you have on Facebook, be a business page. Business users don't get necessarily less reach than everyday users on Twitter. It's just um, a different way of delineating yourself. So you've got 19 views on that one. 59 people viewed my, um, my Is Twitter Any Good for Business podcast um, episode that I posted yesterday. Um, and then yeah, I can continue on and see like more of those. So in this particular one, I can see this is automatically posted from Audio Boom, which is where I um, where I make my podcasts. So I can click on this and I'll then go and play that podcast episode within the browser, within Twitter. So it actually does a little play. There is a powerful tool in the small bit. So it's just playing that out there on my speaker. So I can, it, it'll play it within there, which is great. So not all um, systems will do that. I don't know if Facebook certainly doesn't allow you to do that, but it does do this. So it's saying, okay, well, I've got a message over here as well. So I can check my messages. Um, so I've got an automatic message from Lazy Marketing saying that thanks for following me. Um, I'm the founder of Warrior Network and we teach people to create their own income. So it's basically just some guy selling courses. Again, um, you'll get lots of that. In my profile, I can then you know, move around and see all the usual things, the what's happening, the, the, the trending tweets. I can see all the things I've posted. And because I've got a business profile, I can see my analytics. In those analytics, I can see I've got 20 impressions. So it showed 20 times, 20 people. One person engaged with it. One person visited my profile from that tweet as well. So it tells me a little bit more about what I've got just in that one tweet, how it's performing. So whether we've got any retweets, this one hasn't. Uh, if I go to my um, my audio boom one, so I've had 60 now because I viewed that. So no one's really engaging with it. It's just lots of people saw it. So interesting, it got seen a lot of times, but not a lot of people did anything with it. So that's a very quick look around Twitter. I'm going to talk about the business opportunity of Twitter a little bit later on as we move on to our next cab off the rank which is going to be Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is a funny one because um, it, it's always thought that it's dying and no one's really doing much there, but it's got 433 million active users every month. Now, a lot of those, um, there, was a, there was a drop of users after the pandemic and going back into business as normal, but that happened to all the things like you know, even Facebook lost about like you know, half a million people off it um, after the pandemic here in Australia. So we know that like, Post pandemic, a lot of these systems do lose their followings just a little bit. The posts on Pinterest are called pins. So you're pinning something to a board. So boards are like collections of subjects. So I've got a business board, a Star Trek board. I've got different boards where I pin things of interest. Now, the pins can be something that I make 
or I can pin things from other people's boards onto my boards. So it's like you're collecting all these bits of interesting stuff, like, like, like lots of bookmarks, I guess. Lots of bookmarks of different t- subjects you might be interested in. You can pin photos, you can pin videos, um, what they call rich pins, which is dynamic web content. So if you had, say, for instance, a, um, a recipe on your website, you could pin that page. And what will happen is the content from that in the pin will change as you change that recipe. So if you change any sort of thing on there, it'll change. Um, you can also do what they call um, multi-page ideas pins. So they will be things like your, um, you know, not so much a um, an idea, I think of them more as documents. It's like a white paper or something like that, where you've done um, like uh, an ebook. An ebook is a perfect example of what that could be, like a PDF that's posted up there and people can access it from there. The other one, too, which is probably a bit far from most of us, is uh, the try on product uh, AR pins or augmented reality pins. So, for instance, um, you go in and you it will scan say your face and you can try on a pair of glasses and if they if that if someone there's using that so that's another so sort of in a very much an advanced way of working with pinterest certainly not something i'll be doing in any hurry um, i don't sell products i sell services the good is that it's a big global audience and it's really good in fact it is the best of all the social trap or social networks for generating traffic to your website people are far more willing to click on a link in pinterest than what they are on facebook instagram linkedin or anywhere else um, really interesting it's the best for generating web traffic it's excellent for those of you who sell physical products so not so much if you're selling a service Although this words work, well, there's ways around it. You can put up your eBooks, you can put up your know, white papers and sheet worksheets and all that kind of thing. But it's very, very good for people who happen to sell products that you can give lots of different photos of products. You can tag products. You can associate products with each other. Um, you can associate products with categories and different subjects. So that people who are looking for those things will find them. And I call it quite a brand safe environment. It's very supportive. It's not, you're not going to get a lot of people in there, you know, leaving terrible comments and bullying and, 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 and trolling. It doesn't really happen on Pinterest. My mum is on Pinterest. So friends, my mum posts a lot of her uh, cross-stitch work and she might design patterns of her own that she posts for other ladies to, who are interested in cross-stitch to do. She also collects a lot of people's cross stitches so she can print them out later on her printer and use them as her template for what she's doing with her cross stitch work. So um, for my mum to be on there, I'm, I would feel very safe with my mum on there uh, because it's not a trolling environment. It's not an aggressive environment. It's a really nice environment. The bad side of it though is that doesn't have a big audience in Australia. Even with my mum, she doesn't deal mostly with other Australian ladies. It's mostly with women in the UK and the US. So it's not a big audience here. Uh, it can be a little hard to get noticed and building a following uh, because people just go on there with no real strategy, no real idea what they're doing. They just go, I'm just going to start pinning things just the same way as I do on Facebook or Instagram and then wonder why no one follows them. Pinterest is very much about interests. Hence you see in the name pinning interests. So you find something which has an interest um, that people have. And if you have a product or a service that ties in with that, you're not just constantly pinning things, which are just repeats of what you're putting on Instagram or Facebook, which often just, you know, basically, you know, organically posted ads. You got to go in there and, and look for things that are uh, they're going to be of interest to the people who are looking. So people are looking for um, wedding bouquets and you're a florist. You don't just post in you know, your, your half price deal on for this weekend only. What you do in there is you go, well, I'm going to focus on making sure I share my wedding bouquets as ideas that people may have. The problem is though too, that um, because of that very small audience in Australia, if you're a local business selling things like bouquets of flowers, it's pretty much not going to reach people locally to you because most people locally probably aren't using it. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, maybe you're going to have a bit of an audience. Even in Brisbane, it's kind of a little bit dismal. But um, if once you get to like Perth and Adelaide and, and, and even to Darwin, you're looking at like you know such poor followings of, of audiences in Australia. It's particularly good if you're looking for a global audience, not just for an Australian one. So if you're a local business with a shop front, probably not quite as good for you. It's definitely not as useful for those who sell services as what it is for products. But an idea I've come around with that is that you can create things like infographics and ebooks that can help identify you as a bit of an expert. 
Pinterest pins also can very um, clearly show up as Google search results as well. So it may be worth testing that out to see if you get a bit of a better result by posting things on there that actually will be indexed on Google. Whereas the posts on Facebook, you post on LinkedIn, on Instagram, don't show up on Google. So it's kind of worth having a look at, particularly if it's a graphic, a PDF, or maybe a PNG file or a JPEG file, it will show up um, on Google um, image search results as well. So you've got a bit of an opportunity there, I guess, even though the audience in Australia is not particularly huge. So let's take a look inside Pinterest. Unfortunately, you're going to just notice that in Pinterest, I have a lot of Star Trek stuff again. So we're just looking at my home feed. My home feed has got a, a mix between different ads. So SiteGround is one of my web hosts. I've got an ambassador class Starship from Star Trek. Um, I've been looking for like some things for clients. So I often look at like a lot of architectural photos and use them as reference photos to um, replicate for things like, um, like mid journey and stable diffusion uh, AI image generators. Uh, the idea of Sherpas and facts I like to read. So I really like enjoying facts and figures that I'll find. Um, apparently it feels like I need to do a shoulder workout. I'll tell you what, let's get me walking first before you start me lifting weights, uh, more Star Trek stuff. I had a lot of photos of small business owners that I wanted to find as a way to um, sort of fill in some uh, proposals for clients. So you'll see a lot of stuff, which is like uh, women at laptop computers, business women, uh, that sort of stuff. I don't know why I'm getting celebrity photos, but hey, I am. Uh, sometimes I'm just getting really strange little fashion things as well. Um, but as you can see, I've got a very heavy... I've got a business thing. So I could, this business thing, whiskey has killed more, more men than bullets, but most men would rather be full of whiskey than bullets, which is a really interesting one. So there's um, interesting ideas. Pinterest is an ideas place. If I wanted to say, for instance, uh, we're looking at, um, uh, what was it? Bomb Bonnieri. Did I get that right? Bomb Bonnieri, um, which is the, the gifts that people will give to guests at their wedding. So I can say, okay, what's a great little idea for Bon Bonnieri? So if I was a woman who was getting married or a man who was getting married, even if it was participating, um, I could look at see its ideas for Bon Bonnieri's little gifts to give to people who come to the wedding. So we've got like, you know, little wedding favors, you've got these little tiny, thank you for sharing the day with Joseph and TB, um, which is like little domes with roses in it. So I'd be starting to look at things which are like, okay, this is really what I want. Little living, um, little living uh, succulents. Uh, I think it's a great idea to give to people. So it's something they can take home and it can grow with them. Um, little plants they can take home and plant at home. And it's like a memory of, of the wedding as well. So you start to see lots of little ideas. Now, what I can do is pick up any of these ideas and say, you know, I like succulents. I think they're great. Um, and they grow anywhere. I, I even, have, even I have trouble killing them. But I can do is save it. But not to my, I don't want to save it to my business board. I want to save it to my design. I'm going to create a board called design. And uh, not wedding inspo, don't really want either. I just want design. So I want a, a board called design. So it's safe to save it to my business account. Let's uh, undo that. Oops, I lost it because Zoom gets in the way and blocks all my all my controls. So if I save that, um, I can unsave it again and then save it into a board. So I can create a board down the bottom, call it um, design, uh, interior design. So that's something which I'm interested in. Let's just save it there, create that. And then it's now saved that pin. So I can then go around to a few more of these that I like. Like for instance, these little ones here. Um, I'm going to save that to my interior design board. It's now saved it. So that's me using, I guess, as a user, the, 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 the way of trying to use this as a um, as a business thing would be look at what my posts are myself. I could create my own. So I'm going to look at today's stuff. There's a bit of inspiration there, like a bit of a today feed, which will help you to look at the things that you've been shown to show interest in. And then it'll give you a bit more to work with. But I can also create an idea pin, which is what we're talking about with the multi-page thing. So we can start to create lots of things in a longer document or create a pin. And a pin could be simply me loading up a photo. So let's find a photo. I'll find one from a post I've got here. Let's say I'll do that, that photo, get clear. I'm going to call it get clear and have a bit of information in there and say, um, um, before you, you start running wild on everything new and shiny this year, get clear on what you want out of this year. 
it's okay to set goals for 2023. I can then have a link to my website and then save. So not to interior design, I'm going to save it to my business board, like tax business and now save. And that goes in. So I've just posted something on Twitter. So I'll look at my board, my business board over here right under my profile. I can see my boards. So I've got my business board. So I've got the things that I sort of looked at earlier on. So I posted this early this morning. This got posted yesterday. Um, I've got different business things that I've posted. Like there, a lot of those are different. Um, you know, nine things that I, um, here's a few things a solopreneur can sell online in 2023. So the idea of things that I've posted before, have I got much following on there? Well, I haven't really worked on getting a lot of following yet, but it has allowed me to link through to that blog on my website that links from there. So you can link things the same way you would on any other platform. Just be aware though, you've only got 500 characters to work with in the description. So if I go in here, I just used a few words in here. You've only got 500 to work with. Um, you can also add notes to yourself. Uh, if you want to put a note in there to, hey, we should reuse this again later. But you can go back down through and, and sort of look at how these things are prepared, how these things have worked. So the people who inspired me in uh, one week, I'd decide to put that in. I haven't really had any sort of, like any sort of anyone looking at that because no one's really following me. I'm just putting it on there as an experiment at the moment. So Pinterest, that's, that's pretty much all you need to know about Pinterest. It's quite a simple kind of system. You don't really need to go into a lot of learning curve to do. Just create a pin or an idea pin, see what things are online to search, search for Star Trek. I can search for Star Trek and bring me up a whole lot of Star Trek related paraphernalia that I love. And I can go there and follow new people and, and pin new pins to my Star Trek pins if they're things that I really enjoy. So yeah, that's um, Pinterest for you. Uh, it's not a complicated system. It's actually remarkably uh, simple to follow and simple to use. Uh, the next system we're going to take a look at is Hive. Now, Hive, I can't show you live because it's only an app. So it's not something which you're actually able to use as a web interface, which is one of the big downs I would put for this one. It's got about a million monthly active users. It's pretty much a clone of Instagram. So if you love Instagram, but you don't like what Instagram has done to themselves of late, well, it's kind of a clone of Instagram that gives you no algorithmic suggestions. It just gives you an, a chronological feed of the people that you follow. Pretty much what a lot of people have been asking for Instagram to do, which it does do. There is a chronological feed, um, but it only allows for photos and videos only. So you can't post anything else on there at the moment. Um, Hive was built by a couple of um, American college students who just didn't like the way Instagram was going, decided to build a competitor to it. It's got some really good, um, good features about it. Um, Basically, just think about it as Instagram. It's a friendly, supportive following. Um, it grew rapidly late last year and something happened and it hasn't grown quite so well since then. It's kind of the Instagram that a lot of photographers wish that Instagram still was, but it's not now. So the bad side of Hive is the growth has completely died. Um, it had to close down for a few weeks um, as it had some massive, massive security issues. Now, the problem with Hive is it's a, it's a pet project by a bunch of people four people and literally four people who work for them. And in that they have to do things like moderation, which they don't have time to do. So nothing gets moderated. So even though no one's posting nasty stuff on there, there's still also nothing to stop people posting nasty stuff on there as well. Um, it means that it's um, like things like cybersecurity are not at the core of what they do simply because uh, there's not enough people to follow it, I guess, not enough expertise in house to do that. It's a bit of a passion project that's grown really quickly. They've got no way of knowing how to make money. Thankfully, they have accepted some investment money from outside to help them to keep going. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's not really a place that's friendly to business, probably because there's not that many people on it. Um, a million people around a whole earth of 8 billion people that's not a lot of people and, and and very few of those people are in in Australia. So you'd really have to be sort of referred there by someone who you already follow on somewhere like Instagram. Say if you've got a photographer that you love to follow their stuff, they may say, hey, I'm now using Hive. You can see me over here. That's a great thing. You'll be able to follow them and follow others like them who have decided to make the jump over. Uh, but the reality is Instagram still absolutely kills it. Like I said, 2 billion people on Instagram now, as opposed to 1 million 
on Hive. So in terms of Hive, I can't really show you what it looks like because it's only available on Apple. Um, there's an Android version in beta at the moment. So um, I'm not even sure if I really want to go into it because I, do, I just don't see a point. It's just too small. There's no plans for a web version. They don't really have a strong development pathway. I don't think it's really going to last that long, to be honest. Next up is Mastodon. Now, Mastodon is basically a, a clone of Twitter. Um, it's got about two and a half million monthly active users. Um, that's grown by about another 1.5 million just since October. So since Elon Musk bought Twitter, a lot of people jumped over this called thing called Mastodon. It you can post text, photos, videos, links, just like you can. All the sort of stuff you can post on Twitter it doesn't have live video or anything like that yet. Um, but all those things can be added. It's a clone of Twitter to a point, but it's what it's called federated into individual instances their instances are how do i explain this really clearly instances are for instance i'm part of the twit instance twit um is stands for this week in tech which is a network of um tech journalists uh a guy called leo laporte who's from the us and and does a lot of um, tech how-to channels and and tech discussion channels on on podcasts so i joined that one because you know why not because i'm already you know, very invested in their in their world the problem is though is that I'm mostly going to be seeing and posting to people who are already in that network. So they've only got about 5,000 people on their network. So it's not a lot of people, even though there's 2.5 million people on Mastodon, by going into the Twit instance, I've automatically limited my audience. To get a bigger audience, you would go into the mastodon.social instance. I'm in the twit.social one. You go the mastodon.social. Now, this gets really confusing because you go, isn't it just one system? Well, it's actually not. Mastodon isn't a platform so much as it is a platform of platforms. So I could start up my own Mastodon instance today and call Aussie.social and just have it for Australian people. So that we have a, uh, you know conversations between Australian people. I could start my Mastodon instance and just have it for a private group of my own followers and my own clients. Um, and then no one else would see it if I choose for my instance not to be seen by the rest of what they call the Fediverse, which is other Mastodon instances. So across you know, probably about 200 to 300 different instances of Mastodon, they don't all necessarily talk to them. For instance, uh, Donald Trump's Truth Social is a Mastodon instance, but it doesn't connect to any other Mastodon instances. So everything that's said in Truth Social doesn't get shared onto what we call the federated feed, which is the feed from all the different instances. It's a lot to get your head around. It's not as simple as just going to Twitter and signing up for Twitter and you're on Twitter. Um, you've got to sign, you've got to pick an instance that suits you. You can move instances later. So I can move my ID, which is Dante St. James. I can move across to mastodon.social, which is the big one, um, or to any of the other really big ones that are out there. Like um, I think it's like fed.social or something like that, <coughs> which is also a very big one. So you've got to pick your instance according to where your interests are. I don't use Mastodon as a marketing channel. I use it as a discussion forum for me to talk with other people who are into tech, ask questions, get news, find out what their opinions are. They're people who I trust, people who I know just by the fact that I follow them weekly on this podcast and I participate in the community for that particular group of people. So for me, it works because I'm not using it as a mass broadcasting thing and the problem is with mastodon that while it has some really good things because you really you can you can it's very fast growing it's very new um it, it's not new sorry it's been around for a couple of years but it, it's very fast growing it's good and it tends to be very friendly because you've chosen an instance of mastodon which matches the kind of interests you have so you tend to be i'm interested in tech i'm talking with tech people all the time on mastodon you might have a, um, might be an ex, ex service person. So you've served in the military. There may be a Mastodon interest for people who've served in the military before. So you're talking to your people, you're finding your tribe. It's perfect for finding a very specific niche that you want to add some value to or participate in. But it is not a value like, you know, oh, here's my course. Everyone should do my course. It's really going to help you to be a better ex service person. It's more so that you're participating in a community. It's not very commercial. In fact, it's kind of the opposite of commercial. It's all about conversations. Um, and it's all about people connecting with each other under certain common things of interest. The bad side is it's complicated to set up because you have to choose an instance first. You don't just go to mastodon.com and get going. Um, you kind of go to, like my case, I go to twit.social. So you have to know an instance to go to. So if you want to look at a list, 
Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, if you want to look at a list of Mastodon instances, just search on Google and say Mastodon instances and then put in your interest for journalists, for doctors, for um, health and well-being. And I'll actually give you some ideas. Of it. If you say um, you know, uh, Mastodon instances for anti-vaxxers, if that's the thing you want to do, that's a search you put in the Google and you'll find some sort of Mastodon instance, which is made for people who have grouped together in certain things. It is built for connecting, but it's not for marketing. It's actually really bad at marketing at the moment because your instance isn't everyone else's instance. So you can't see everyone and they can't see you unless they choose to follow you. So the most successful people on Mastodon essentially taken their same username from Twitter, created in whatever the Mastodon instance is, and then told their followers on Twitter and other places, this is where you'll find me on Mastodon if you want to follow me there. So that's been sort of a way they've done it. Um, let's take a look at my uh, Mastodon. So in my Mastodon at twit.social, kind of looks a little bit like Twitter, a little bit more clean. It doesn't have ads or anything like that. Um, different instances are going to look different to this. So they don't all look like this. They will look different in colors. They'll look different in layout. This is a very basic instance. Some of the guys at, tw uh, at This Week in Tech haven't created anything sort of out there. Um, Glenn Fleischman has found some photos from 2000, we include a reunion of the Yale summer program in graphic design. So post some photos, you can sort of flip through, they post it on there. Um, I can, you know, star that as a, as a, as a like. Um, Glenn Fleischman is someone who I listen to on the podcast quite a lot. I quite enjoy what he has to say. Um, it's got trending, um, what they call toots, they're not called tweets or posts. Um, so the tw trending posts down here are all basically... Um, made around <coughs> excuse me people that are on this instance this is not across the whole of mastodon if i want to see more than just what's coming in here from the people i follow across the whole world or from just within the twit.social area i can look over here and i can look at okay i can explore hashtags so i can explore some things so it's a cassette kasim rashid um is is talking about something about law enforcement i can look at hashtags such as um world introvert day well that sounds interesting world introvert day i can look at that and what it actually is look at the photos people are posting i want to be alone with someone else who also wants to be alone <coughs> oh, sorry. sorry i've just got sorry i've got um someone calling me um so if i want to be able to look at what all these are and i go okay this is all fun this is all really good i can do all this I can I can look through my 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 whole uh, my whole um, feed, but then if I want to look at things that are coming from further afield, I want to look at the federated over on the right, and the federated um, feed is what's coming from all of the Mastodon instances that are shared with us with each other. So these are allowing the twit.social instance to see them. So the first thing I see is Glenn Fleischman again, Penguin Pete. So things are coming through quite quickly. Um, we're seeing uh, Chesapeake, more from Glenn Fleischman. I'm a world watcher. These are coming from lots of this one. There's Tim at Photog Social. So Tim Troutman is from a, a, an instant called photog.social. So mine's twit.social. He's on photog.social, which is a, a, a particular instance of Mastodon specifically for, for, for photographers. So it's all a little bit different. Uh, as we move down, we start to see Penguin Pete again. He's posting a lot today. Um, Ukrainian News, um, Scott Kingsley Clark. You'll start to see people, or you may want to look for people who are somewhere else. Now, you cannot search for someone that's not on your instance. So I can look for Leo Laporte, because I know that Leo Laporte is on this. Leo Laporte over here. So I can follow him. So I'm going to follow him. Twitter social Leo. I can follow him. He's got a few different places. He's got a pixel fed. So this is where it gets really complex. So he's on a few things. <clears throat> he's on Synology, which is a different kind of use of Mastodon. And he's on a thing down here called pixel fed. Pixel fed is a version of Mastodon, which isn't Mastodon. It's actually called pixel fed, but it's, it's, it's compatible with Mastodon. So it's like a, uh, an Instagram. So Instagram. So I can go to Leo Laporte over on a pixel fed. And because it is compatible with Mastodon, I can see his stuff 
here on Mastodon as well. I don't have to go to Pixelfan. So you can cross across different networks that have very different ways of doing it. Um, whilst they have their own twit.social, they don't, he also happens to post his stuff when he's on holidays and all that um, to this thing called PixelFed, which is basically just Instagram, but an open source version of it. So there's so many different sort of worlds you can go onto. It's a real rabbit hole you can jump down. Um, when it comes to following people, you really need to know who they are so you can follow them where they are at. And you would need to know. So for instance, down here, Jeff Jarvis, whilst he, I'm following him, he's not on twit.social he's on mastodon.social which is the big one so to know how to follow someone who's not on your own instance who you can't find you'd have to know their full username so it's at then their username then the instance they're on so it's designed more for privacy it's designed more for keeping things small and compact it's not designed for the mass consumption of media like things like Facebook and YouTube and, and Instagram and Twitter are. So that's where it sort of comes down to a being a bit confusing for people. It's definitely not something that's for beginners. Uh, it's something which you're going to have to sort of, you know, try and learn a bit for yourself because it's hard to explain it all without you sort of diving in and getting an understanding of it. Now, Reddit is our next one. 50 million monthly active users, a collection of discussion topics, public and private discussion topics. Um, it is it is both public and by Reddit itself moderated. It's about text, photos, videos, links. Um, it starts off really being a home to millions of topics, millions of conversations. You can start your own, what it's called a subreddit. Subreddit is basically a conversation, a, a topic. It's got a bit of a new layout, which is far easier to use than the old layout. I've just converted over to it today. On the bad side of Reddit, it can be a massive weird rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. There's a lot of bullying, a lot of not safe for work stuff, a lot of conspiracy theories and trolling going on. It's not really always open to you promoting your business. These networks aren't necessarily like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, where you're just posting pictures for your business all the time. This is just a little bit different. These are discussions. So you don't go into Reddit to promote your business. You go into Reddit to discuss things that you have maybe some expertise at. I've got a bit more about the opportunity coming up. We'll take a look inside what Reddit looks like here. Now, the new version of Reddit is much neater and tidier than the old version. It's a feed. So you just go down, you've got a feed of things coming up. So we've got there, Happy New Year from Australia. So um, I follow, it's suggesting that I might be, um, you know, uh, worth following the subreddit Australia. So R dash Australia, it means there's a subreddit or a category or a discussion called Australia. So I'm going to join the Australian subreddit. Um, for Reddit itself, they said 2022 was bananas. Um, you've got starter packs, which is one I follow. So this is the uh, asking a question on a tech subreddit as someone who isn't tech savvy starter pack. So it's very meme oriented. Lots of memes start here. Um, you've got things like nightmares. So there's a great big um, whirlpool there that someone's just driving their boat around, which is something I probably wouldn't really want to be doing too much because it's just, uh, looks really dangerous. So, um, so there's little things like that. I can, I can you know, award it by paying for something. I can, you know, like it. I can uh, comment on it. I can read what the comments are. Now, instead of liking on Reddit, you upvote or downvote things. So I'm going to upvote it because I thought it was interesting. This one here was a bit too niche, so I'm going to downvote it. So what the idea is that if you upvote things, things become easier for other people to look for. Uh, if you do um, things like a down, like a downvote, what it's going to do is make it less likely that other people will see it, makes it less popular. Um, and then, yeah, then we can look through different things. So this is a mildly interesting. So someone found this mildly interesting um, slot pre almost pre-sliced orange. So I'm going to upvote that because it's interesting. Uh, I'm going to add for Pizza Hut. <laughs> I can look at a child on transit, personal physical disability and child looking at them. It's, it, it does happen. Um, that's the bikini bottom Twitter, which is um, basically all about sub SpongeBob SquarePants uh, memes. Um, how cars at speed off expect people to react. And it's like, you know, this is, this is just interesting. This is where trends start. It's really where trends start on, on, on the internet. And you'll start like things that you'll see that, that pop up that are interesting on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and posts like that generally start their lives as a post in a subreddit on Twitter. 
So it's a little hard to explain how that begins. Um, I'm following imaginary landscapes and things such as, um, you know, interesting AI art. So that one I really like. I thought it was really well done. Um, someone posting about the power outage at the retail store they work at. So I follow like a lot of, um, <laughs> this is really cool, wholesome memes I really, really enjoy because it's, um, it, it does things which tells like the truth about like what people really want because people are basically good. For you to make a post on here, you just go plus, plus over here, create a post. And then you do your post. You can add images, video. You can have a link to it. You can start a poll. You can talk live on it. So you can actually have a, um, a, uh, a voice recording. Um, it gives you ideas on what it is. So what you want to do is not just share stuff of other people's. What you want to do is try and make sure that you remember to be, uh, you're talking to humans, behave like you would in real life. Look for the original source of the content. Don't just blindly post other people's stuff. Um, search for duplicates. People don't like seeing duplicates in these subreddits. So make sure you, you haven't, it hasn't been posted already. And then read the community's rules. So make sure you really, you really know what the rules are of this community. Each one of these. So for instance, if I go into the Deep Space Nine one, Deep Space Nine subreddit will have its own rules. So I've got it over here. The, sub, um, the subreddit for everything Star Trek Deep Space Nine, post pics, videos, everything, and the actors. It doesn't have a lot of rules in place. Uh, just be, be respectful and follow Reddit. So it's got very basic rules about it. So in that one, I join that. I can and I can post to it if I've got something I want to add to the conversation. Um, there's a pin post here, be care of scam posts selling merch. Just as usual, scams are everywhere. It's always, and people are discussing episodes and story arcs from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, something which I will do a lot of reading about. So I suppose what you could do, you can start up your own subreddit, but what you really do want to do is participate in other people's. So if you look for something you want to look for, which is, um, let's just say Darwin Northern Territory, which is my hometown. Let's see what they've got. So Darwin, has there a Darwin subreddit? There's beautiful sunsets, uh, public freakouts, communities. Let's see. There's Australia one. There's, a, there's R Darwin. So I'm going to join the Darwin one. Um, there's R Darwin Australia. This one's got seven and a half thousand members, so it's likely to be one I'll have some interest in. There'll be like people posting stories from the news, um, transplant recipients. We've got something about mold growing in their um, house. Um, people who want to ask what batteries are like with solar in Darwin. Um, looking for a job in construction in Darwin um keep your dogs and children quiet in the morning some of us have been up all night setting off fireworks <laughs> a bit of a joke there for our cousins in adelaide so if you're looking for something which is very um you might want to go in there not so go in there start promoting yourself but you go in there and you become a helpful member of the community just like you would in a facebook group i suppose all right running out of time so i better move on to our uh, final um one which is cora now cora is again a little bit different to all these cora has about 300 million people who visit that website. Um, because you can, but very few people you remember, um, you just join as free and you can become a member of it. Um, texts can be shared as well as photos, videos, and links. On this good side, it's got a very big audience that's looking for experts and people to answer questions. You can also show your expertise to a global audience so you can reach a bit more than just outside your local area. You can ask your own questions and answer your own questions as well if you really want to be a smarty pants and show how smart you are. But I find it's a good way of getting other people to add extra points of view to things you might be working on that you want a little bit of extra insight onto. The bad is that there's a lot of SEO spam in there. People who just post things basically so they can insert a link back to their website and hopefully get a little bit of extra backlinks to um, to their website um, and help their, their ranking in Google. Google. Um, sometimes the answers are just plain wrong. They're just people's opinions. They're not actually you know fact-checked or anything. They're just people's opinions. There's also no way to localize your audience apart from using the ads platform, which can localize it a bit. But you'll find in smaller places, let's just say Toowoomba, or maybe Bunbury or Alice Springs, you're not really going to find a lot of users there. So you're not going to reach a lot of people anyway. The Cora um, is, it's interesting. I don't go in there all the time. 
Um, I go in there sometimes when, I, when I'm prompted that there's some kind of question being asked that's relevant to me. So I follow a lot of Game of Thrones stuff in here. There's some um, different spaces that I follow, Marketing Pro, Instagram for Marketers, um, A Space of Ice and Fire, which is also it's all based around Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, marketing and content, social media and marketing. And there's something like someone's asking, what bothers you most about Game of Thrones? And someone answered that, you know, a particular story within the Game of Thrones that really just doesn't make sense to them, they're really sick of. Um, you go, questions that people ask, which are definitely like asking, for, they're trolls, they're just asking for comments and they really want to just generate, in this case, 50,000 responses. My husband sent my seven-year-old stepson to boarding school because I dislike him. However, he comes back for a month during vacation. How can I limit his vacation time as much as possible? This It's clearly not, not a real person. It's clearly a troll who's just trying to get people all up in arms and talking. So that's what you do find on Quora. Now I can ask something on here is, um, uh, what are some, I don't actually want to be in that one. I want to be in the digital marketing space. Let's try the digital marketing space. Um, I'm going to put in a message. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. What are some less than obvious um, uses that people have found for chat GPT, which is something I'm playing with a lot lately? And so I go add the question. It's going to go into this particular thing. So I'm going to go, um, if I want to look at some topics, I want to look at like uh, technology, chatbots, uh, software. I want to, so it's suggesting more things for me to follow that I might be interested in, human behavior, um, commu chat communication. So it's saying, hey, you might want to follow some more stuff so you can find some more answers to that. And so now it's found a whole lot of people. I can, I can send requests to specific people to answer it if they are known as people who are... Um, as uh, um, as people who are just, um, I lost my train of thought, who I know have expertise in a certain area. Um, somebody who I didn't know, someone anonymous has just asked, how do you know the poster from a troll in Cora? You just look at what the reaction is. Like, is there really going to be a, someone who's a, asking publicly in a forum with their real name asking that kind of question? It's going to be very much trollish. So it's it's like, it may not be, it may be someone real, but honestly, given the reaction to it, I'd say it's very un, unlikely that it was someone who wasn't a troll who was asking a very serious question in there. So that's, um, Core is a bit of fun. Um, you can you can go in there and be an active participant or you can just read things. Um, at the moment, I'm just gonna, that'll, that'll let me know via email when someone actually responds to it. So I can go out of there. I don't have to completely be in there the whole time. It will let me know when someone does actually do something. So the opportunities for business, small business, particularly in each of these, is a bit different. Twitter is an extra place to drive traffic from pretty much. You can insert links in there. You can use it as a customer service channel. I found that um, a few of my clients, um, not many, but a couple of them have come in and, and wanted to contact me through Twitter. So I'm glad I was there because it's something where they're obviously comfortable being there and, and requesting support from there. Um, it's very good for very quick updates and announcements because it's um, very easy to work with on, on a mobile phone and very low fi In other words, not, not a lot of bandwidth is needed to run it. You can quickly update things, get them out. Whereas on Facebook, you feel like you have to add a phone photo instagram it's got to be a photo on a video twitter can just be text so it's very good for those quick things i find that um pinterest is good for creating a bit more awareness of some quirky products if you're importing some sort of weird shaped candle that no one else has ever seen you can get some great footage of that you can get some great photos on it share it on pinterest and people will see it if you're looking for unusual candles you should come up in searches like that very good at generating web traffic. I said before, it's the, actually the best and most effective way to get traffic to your website from a social network because people are, because they're, because they're looking at things, they're researching things, they're exploring, they're in a curious state of mind. They're far more likely to click on a link to go somewhere than what they are on say Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or even YouTube. Um, it's also that pins are very sticky. So if you, pay, you post something up, um, on Instagram, it's pretty much here today, gone tomorrow. Facebook, here today, gone tomorrow. You post a really good pin. It may not pick up any sort of momentum for two weeks. And all of a sudden, it just bursts through with lots of interest with it before it dies off. And then two years later, it pops up again. And people are talking about it all over again. It's because it is often suggested not just through... Um, through uh, it's not like you get a latest search like a latest things coming through like facebook does 
It's more that you, people are looking for the best possible result for something that's interesting within their area of interest. So they are sticky. Your things can come back again. Hive, it might be useful if you want to be known by other photographers. It doesn't have an ad platform. Very few people use it. To be honest, I don't think it's going to be around much longer. I don't see it growing a lot more than it currently is. Um, I might be wrong, but I just don't feel like it's going to go anywhere. Mastodon is really good for finding your tribe, your people. For business though, it's not great because um, there's no ad platform. There's You're not likely to sell things to people who are interested in the same things you're interested in. You're more likely to sell things to people who are outside of your interest areas. Um, so it's great for you know, people who are very good at looking for opportunities early on for establishing that expertise and authority. So posting your blogs, posting your um, links through to your, 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 your research, your papers, any sort of things like that. Publishing opinions can be good. Just make sure though, you're in a place where people appreciate those opinions. So that comes down to choosing that Mastodon instance really, really carefully, making sure you're on the right one for what you want to reach. Reddit, it's where all the trends and memes start. You can participate in conversations as an expert. Um, you can uh, start conversations. You can comment on conversations, um, depending on which subreddit or which subject or topic you're looking to talk in. Um, some of them are not looking for experts. They're just looking for a conversation. But there's some places where people are actually looking for real advice. So you can actually set yourself apart as a bit of a hero person in a subreddit for that particular very, very niche topic that you know a lot about. Let's say, for instance, you know how to do rehab holster lounges without having to go and pay for upholstery people to do it. Well, then you could be someone who's really, really um, helpful to people in the upholstery um subreddit and you become an expert in there and people might actually see you as someone and go hey i want to get some upholstery done where are you located and you say oh i'm in sydney oh okay i'm in california probably isn't going to work out well that's the problem with reddit it's so global but there are probably not a lot of others who do what you do in there if you do something which is kind of a little bit less common on cora you have to be seen as an expert by answering questions so very similar to to reddit you answer questions very intelligently and correctly with facts, it'll be appreciated by people and people will upvote your responses if you have a very helpful response. I'll downvote your responses if they're not so helpful. You can start new conversations like you just saw me do and you can get diverse points of view as people coming back. Now, I'll be interested to see what those, um, what the answers I get from the, the post I just made because you know, I'm, I'm legitimately interested in what their responses will be as to non-obvious uses for chat GPT. It's also quite robust, the ad platform, but it doesn't target well in Australia. It leads lots of people and we don't have a lot of people. There's only 50 million people in the world on this platform. Sorry, 300 million people are coming to this um, platform every month, but not a lot of those are in Australia because it's not that well known. So if you're looking for something really local, it may not be the best option. Are they worth Ask yourself these questions. Are your people on the platform? Do you have the time to invest in it? What extra will this bring you that you aren't already getting from the platforms you're on? And is it just a new shiny object that you're looking for basically because you want to try something new? Myself, I'll be looking at Twitter very heavily this year. Pinterest a little bit, Mastodon a little bit. I'm also Mastodon going to be learning from other professionals, other people in my, my field who know more than I do. Pinterest is going to be a place where I'm going to start sharing things like um, diagrams, ebooks, guides, uh, infographics, that kind of thing. And Twitter will just be basically whatever I'm posting on LinkedIn will also be posted on Twitter. You'd like to know more? The three one hour, three three one hour coaching uh, segment of the Digital Solutions Program is available to you if you haven't used it already. Plus, you get access to four or many more hours of workshops and webinars for forty four dollars. You can do that at digitalsolutions.businessstation.com. Dot au. Take a quick screenshot or take a photo of that or just search a business station online. You'll find all the links through where to go from there. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was really fun showing these alternatives to the main social networks that we all know and love. Um, you can reach me on any of these ones. Um, very easy to find on Instagram, um, on, on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn or via my email address, business, uh, Dante at businessstation.com.au. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Happy New Year to you. I hope you have a fantastic 2023 and I hope to see you in a lot more of these videos in the future. Thank you. Have a great week.